if you're in a in a neighborhood that has any kind of homeowners association, even if it's a homeowners association that you think isn't terribly active, um, a lot of times, you know, sometimes even smaller homeowners associations, it, you know, I hate to say this, exists sometimes for the for the purpose of uh, you know approving architectural plans and uh, changes to existing housing, and so you know a lot of times you have to deal with both your your local community in addition to your city, and sometimes associations can be uh, even more difficult to deal with, unfortunately, than uh, than the city at times. Mm-hmm. Sp- speaking of associations, I did a, a major remodel on my house years ago. And I wanted to put in a uh, uh, barbecue, obviously, and a, and a fireplace and all this other good stuff. But the two the two pieces, the barbecue and the fireplace, I didn't realize the barbecue had to be X amount of feet away from the fence. Property line, correct. Yeah. And then the fireplace um, really meant code. But because of the association, I had to have my neighbor sign off on it. And he sat there and looked around and looked around and wanted to see how much I was going to be obstructing his view and and really just had a hard time with it. And I'm, I've already dumped a bunch of money into this and, you know, and I've gotten started on everything. So I had to sit there and negotiate with my neighbor. Basically, I ended up paying for, for a, a bit of remodel for his, his stuff. And I agreed to lower the size of my fireplace by three feet. So Tony's right that the associ- if, if there's an association where you're building, you absolutely need to go beyond the city permits and look at the association as well and all the requirements that, that are involved there. 